It's not about the integrity of the judges. No, this is not about judicial integrity. All I'm saying is this. I took 100 political cases. I analyzed the voting patterns. The voting patterns coincided with the parties who appointed them to power. I shouldn't be answering the questions here. Someone else should be answering the questions. It is not a coincidence that this happened. To convince me that it's a coincidence, you need to give me arguments that it is a coincidence. So what, for whatever it's worth, let's put this analysis in the mix and try and improve the debate around the justice system. I would never insult anyone not to talk of uh, judges of this. No, no, no. I cannot do that. I'm engaged in the critical analysis of our political institutions. And critical analysis always meets opposition. So it's not an insult. It is just putting out analysis there from which we can improve um, our democracy. So the question I have for you is, what should we do with these analysis? Should we stop doing them? Should we have another way of funneling it to the public? What should we do? Right, so that's uh, Professor Raymond Atuba, the Associate Professor at the University of Ghana, and he was uh, addressing judges of the Superior Court at a function at Gimpa uh, in the course of the week, and we'll shortly also let you know the reaction. I'm sure some of you are already aware the reaction by the Chief Justice and other judges who were there. And uh, of course, Justice uh, Jones Doche said what he did was an insult of the highest, highest, highest um, um, order. Now, uh, Professor Kwekwasari has commended Professor Atuguba. And what's your, what's your point of commendation, sir? <coughs> He's doing his uh, doing empirical research. You know, people are always speculating, and it's useful that somebody will bring empirical data to either check, uh, either confirm what they are saying or just confirm what they are saying. Now, uh, uh, frankly, what uh, Raymond was saying is hardly surprising. It doesn't surprise me. It is consistent with what many people already say. For instance, a lot of us have been campaigning that. They shouldn't allow the chief justice to pick the panel to sit on cases. Well, why do we say that? The reason we say that is because it is very easy to know a particular judge's judicial philosophy. And if I can know it, then the chief justice can also know it. And the chief justice can choose five people that will guarantee an outcome that will be very different if he has chosen a different set of people. And so what do presidents do when they appoint members to the Supreme Court? They don't appoint members randomly. The president assembles a legal team, and the legal team will go and read everything that the judge has written. And then the president will evaluate the judicial philosophies of all those people. And the president will naturally appoint people whose judicial philosophies are consistent, are consistent with his own view or her own view of how the Constitution should be interpreted. So should it surprise no, people what, what, that... Some, some, some ask the question, this is a very dangerous thing to do, and more importantly also because some question <coughs> the logic that because of the absence of unanimity of the judges on a matter, which is a political, a political matter, it means then that, you know, they are doing something because of their political, you know, mm. philosophies, or what? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, look, judges are human beings. You know, we should uh, be get serious. Judges are human beings, and they bring to the question of judging their experiences, their, you know, the reaction with people, their interaction, <coughs> and so on. So when they write opinion, it's going to reflect their own philosophy. Now, look, I go to the... No, but when they, write, know, when they write opinions... They give you reasons for yes. each opinion that is taken because they are enjoined by law to give you reason. And the reasons yeah. they give are undergirded by law. So what's, what's the point? He says that where...
persuasion through the judgment. It's clarity in the, you know, analysis. But that's what I'm telling you, that the law is not arithmetic, where you can add two plus two and everybody will stay four. When you take a legal matter to the court, people are going to be with, with their philosophy. Majority versus minority is just based on uh, careful, uh, neutral evaluation. Then if you look at a, lo a tender line consistent, you wouldn't know how <laughs> people from the same not be al an alignment mm. and they sit with the president who is appointing them don't you take and his data don't, to get that don't you don't you, take, don't you take don't you take the chief justice don't you take the chief justice court course here to you we can be brief about it yes. american about that here here in ghana we have a fledgling a, a fledgling situation the people the the level of education and all of that it's not a As you have in these places. So this can be very <laughs> dangerous to do. You mm didn't -hmm. do research because research is a danger to... Uh, I mean, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. Research is extremely important and academic freedom is guaranteed. It is highly uh, in, uh, improper for judges to go to a university here at Gimpa and attack academic freedom. Academics are free to share their mind, even if they, are, uh, if they make people uncomfortable. That's okay. what is going on here. Mm. And again, I come back to my mm. main point. Mm. What Atukuba is saying is hardly controversial. If I were to go to court tomorrow and I'm asked to pick a panel, I'm going to pick a panel because I've read their opinions and I know how they think. I'm going to pick people who I think are favorable to me. What's wrong with that? I mean, all he's saying is okay. presidents know the judicial philosophy of the judges that they appoint, and it shouldn't surprise anyone mm. that okay. when the judges sit on the court, thank you, thank you, thank you appoint. very much indeed, Professor Stephen Kwekua Sari. Uh, Professor Stephen Kwekua Sari has been very, mm. very vocal on these three important issues that we have um, gotten him to canvas. Uh, this morning, particularly his crusade for the what has been termed as opening of the floodgates <laughs> at the for legal education in Ghana, because he insists that there are so many people who are running out of Ghana, and that just yesterday he actually showed photographs where he says about um, 32. 32 Ghanaians have gone to Rwanda, and they are seeking the law school education there so that they will come to Ghana to practice. They will be called to the, the bar there, and when they come to Ghana, there's a very short thing we call post-call. That one, um, it doesn't appear there's a limit for the numbers of people who get to do it. So people go outside, they do that, and they come back and do it. And he's saying that many Ghanaian students who have done LLB are going to the UK, going to elsewhere to do them and come here. And that's a lot of foreign exchange. If we did our things well, we can cash in on that. Well, the General Legal Council says, they are interested in expanding, but they are presently constrained. We will take a break here, and when we return,